So, uh, welcome to the, uh, oh, that's the wrong slide. Let's start from the beginning. Welcome to the Prometheus Functional Update for uh, August. Uh, I'm Ben Kochi, I'm the Prometheus lead. Uh, Joshua is our product manager, and then we have engineers on team, Powell, Kevin, Julius, and Mike. Uh, Mike just joined us recently to, uh, to work more on the uh, front end. Uh, so uh, straight into 9.5. So in 9.5, we uh, added some nice uh, new automatic monitoring for the idea to production and automatic deploys. So this is uh, really great for demos. Uh, and at the end of this, we'll, uh, Josh will actually do a little demo of this. Um, it should be uh, uh, nice and easy for everybody to now see automatic Prometheus metrics uh, and get some starting to get some actual like customer facing metrics into the uh, for for GitLab users. Uh, also in 9.5, we've improved the, the GitLab Rails uh, Ruby metrics. We have uh, um, uh, done a bunch of cleanup and added a few more metrics that has been helping out in production uh, to to help instrument uh, the GitLab install and the GitLab.com install. Um, and we've done a little bit of cleanup to improve the metric names to meet our guidelines. Uh, uh, we also added a simple web server into the Sidekick uh, job runner. Uh, that will allow us to expose uh, worker metrics and finally get much better information from the workers to find out what they're doing. Uh, and uh, we'll be expanding on this in later releases. Uh, we also continue to do some minor improvements. Uh, we did some UI and bug fixes and improvements. Uh, and we also had a bunch of bugs that were discovered in the uh, Prometheus multiprocess library, which is the back uh, the back end code that do, uh, instruments the Ruby code. So we can, uh, and that was causing some problems in production. We had to turn it off. But those bugs are all fixed now, and we've been doing some uh, nice performance improvements, so that uh, uh, monitoring does not get in the way of actually uh, uh, serving users. So coming up in 10.0. Uh, 10.0, uh, we're going to have a big focus on getting uh, parity, uh, feature parity with the influx DB metrics that have been in the in the system for a while. Um, influx DB is used in a little bit of a different way. Uh, it sends uh, event streams at, instead of uh, uh, metric streams. So, and what that means is, for every event that happens, we send a metric, uh, or we send we send a sample event to the influx DB. This is not something that is possible with Prometheus. Uh, so we're going to be translating that and improving on things with Prometheus. We'll be actually be able to have live, real-time uh, histogram data instead of having to do post-processing on event streams. Uh, and this will this will allow us to eventually remove the influx DB metrics from the GitLab application. Uh, we're also going to be working on another uh, major feature. We're going to be trying to improve the application performance metrics uh, uh, so that uh, users will be able to put their own metrics and be able to see their own metrics coming from their applications instead of just uh, side metrics like the CPU and memory usage of their running applications. Uh, we're also going to start working on adding Canary uh, support to the Prometheus. We've been wanting to do this for a couple of releases, uh, but it's been uh, we've run out of time with all the various other work going on. And we'll finally be able to, uh, we're finally going to put some effort into getting the Canary features added to the enterprise, uh, to enterprise edition. Um, uh, Prometheus in, in the GitLab.com production, we've been working on the InfluxDB to Prometheus uh, gateway so that the existing InfluxDB metrics are available to the Prometheus server so that we can uh, do more real-time monitoring that InfluxDB uh, hasn't been able to do because of the way uh, we ingest that data. There's a little bit of blockers because of some inconsistency in the labels. But that's being worked on and hopefully should be cleared up um, soon. We've also uh, spent some time to help production with their alert manager and alerting so that we can reduce the alert fatigue for production and improve the in, uh, alerting visibility uh, for the production environment. Uh, and we've also been working on trying to improve the Git host alerting uh, because they've also been drowning in alerts and need to have a little bit of sanity for their, uh, uh, their monitoring. Uh, and now uh, I'll leave it to Joshua to do a quick demo of the idea to production. Cool.
thanks, Ben. Um, and uh, we won't do a full IATP demo. We'll just kind of focus on the uh, the monitoring section here. I'll look at the changes folded into the sales script. Uh, also, while I'm getting set up here, just wanted to thank Jose. Um, he wasn't on the team list there for some reason, but uh, he's done uh, the vast majority of all the front end code here for all the Prometheus items. So I definitely want to thank him and all his contributions and uh, make sure other folks know that he's been quite busy helping out. Um, so cool. So um, this is, again, uh, a center IDP demo that's been deployed by our Helm charts. Um, and if you deploy with our Helm charts, like we do with IDP, um, this is all very, very automatic. Um, so I'll go ahead and create a new project uh, and just pick a new URL. Stake preview of 9.5 in case you haven't seen it. This is running RC4, which is like half an hour old, um, maybe an hour. Got a public project. Oop, I've already had the same name. So let me uh, just do that. Put back in our URL here and create project. All right, cool. All right, so um, we did make a couple minor changes to the example app here. Nothing major, basically just added an option to um, introduce a little latency because before it was responding so quickly, it'd always be zero. And so a zero latency chart is uh, not that interesting. Um, and then we also introduced an error endpoint if folks want to use it, that they can then generate some errors to show the metrics. Um, but of course, as you all know, click on auto deploy, click on Kubernetes, or we can even do Kubernetes with Canary here. Just all we have to do now is enter in our domain name, which I think is this one. Let me just make sure. Yep, we're good. I just couldn't see it. We'll scroll down, commit this into master. And we'll, of course, have our new pipeline that is running. Take a couple seconds here to get things into staging. While that's happening, I should mention that this is not just for people who deploy their Helm charts or deploy with uh, IDP. Uh, what we actually do is we can pull these metrics off of the Nginx ingress, which is probably the most popular ingress for uh, Kubernetes. Um, and so uh, if you're deploying there and if you're using Nginx ingress, you could simply set one flag uh, on that uh, Nginx ingress and you'll get the Prometheus metrics. And then once you have that, all the rest is done. Um, the only thing with our Helm chart is it automatically does that for you. It uses the um, uh, Nginx ingress and then sets that flag. Um, but so it's really not a lot of config uh, either way, even if you don't use it, it's just that it's not totally 100% automatic here. So let's go ahead and open up our page. Here we have hello world. You'll see it takes uh, just like quarter of a second to load here, which is a bit different than before, but you know, not too long. Um, we'll give it a couple seconds to get some of the monitoring hooked up. We'll give it some, uh, uh, some traffic to take a look at. We can also hit the error endpoint here as well, just to give you a sense of what that looks like. There we go. And if we head back to our page here and click on monitoring, we'll see some metrics coming through. And again, it takes a couple seconds here for the metrics to get picked up. Um, but you'll see here we'll have uh, the error rate, which is how many errors or HTTP 500 errors they happen per second, the latency, and then also the number of requests per second as well. So if we just hit refresh here, we'll start to see data pop up in just maybe another 15 or 20 seconds. We can also just uh, continue to give it some more traffic to keep things interesting while we're waiting. Um, and of course, during a normal demo, you can uh, talk through or go through other, uh, other areas. Um, but there you go. You can see we got latency popping up. Um, for our first uh, data collection point. Uh, and you'll see a couple more seconds here. You'll see throughput coming through and you'll see uh, HP errors coming through. Again, since we just deployed like half a minute ago, it takes a couple seconds for things to, uh, to cycle through. There we go. So, and again, as of course you generate more traffic and as uh, we get more data points here, you'll have a, a little more resemblance of a chart. Um, but you can see really there how easy it is to get some pretty important metrics. You know, how many errors you're generating, uh, what's your customer latency? And so you see you get 17 milliseconds, for example, here. Um, and then of course also on the air on the throughput side, you know, not too many requests per second, but, uh, uh, but, but, but we're doing all right for an application that just launched a couple seconds ago. So um, pretty cool stuff. And of course you have your uh, CPU utilization here uh, as well being pulled from uh, Kubernetes. So, um, we do have a, uh, a page to load says wait for data, which is when you don't have any data whatsoever. And we're kind of pulling it from Prometheus. You'll see it kind of pop up there for a second. Um, it's harder for us to know, you know, um, like for a certain chart, if there is um, 
a data point or not. Um, but we can certainly look into it and see if we can improve it, have like a little chart here saying, you know, we don't have enough data points or something like that. But that's a good suggestion, Clement, thanks. Any other questions? No? Okay. Well, thanks for everyone's time. We'll give back uh, 20 minutes. And uh, maybe Ben, if you want to wrap up or we can sign off for now. Yeah, no, if, if nobody else has any questions, uh, uh, that, that's just absolutely amazing to, to see the useful metrics for, for customers. And with that, uh, yeah, 20 minutes back. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.